Welcome to Case Notes from the Field, a podcast where we get into the thoughts and everyday lives of some of the most interesting people in our field. Our goal is to showcase the knowledge and experiences of social workers and other helping professionals with anyone who has an interest in working with people, promoting social justice, and learning more about the best line of work in the world. So, Welcome, everybody. This is episode one, and I'd like to welcome my first guest ever, Mariah Mensing. Am I saying that right? I never was quite sure. Yes, you're saying that. Okay, Mariah (laughs) Mensing. Um, I met Mariah several years ago when we worked together for a local county child welfare department. Um, And then Mariah and I both kind of went our separate ways professionally. But we still kind of keep in touch a little bit over social media, and and I know she's been up to um, some pretty exciting stuff. So that's why I was happy to to get her on here with me for episode one. So please, if you're watching this, please for, forgive us. We're trying to get everything set up so you might see us a little close to the mic or further away. But hopefully, you'll you'll get the you know you'll you'll see what we're trying to do, and you'll hear some good content. I know you're going to hear that. So. All that stuff being said and out of the way, Um, Mariah, why don't you start off, I guess, and maybe you could tell us a little bit about yourself, where where you're from, what's like your educational background, or anything you might want to share about your work or family history, or um, just so we can get to know you a little bit. Okay. That's a loaded question, (laughs) (laughs) but I love it. I'll I'll share something that's what I like to call digestion. Tell us all the worst and most exciting <laughs> stuff about yourself. There's so <laughs> no. much. There's so much. <laughs> um, but to start, I am from San Luis Obispo County. Grew up there. I moved to the Bay Area about seven and a half years ago um, to go to school at San Jose State to do their social work program. And um, did their program, completed it, and then pretty much since then, I've been doing social work in different capacities. Um, A little bit more on my background, I have a big family of five siblings. Um, I'm adopted, and yeah, I love life. I love social work. Um, I have been in and out of different, working with different nonprofits and worked with the county with you. Um, and then now I have my own business kind of combining everything that I love mm. in life. Okay. And we're for sure going to get to that. You'll see some of Mariah's merch right here, and we'll talk about that in a little while. But um, you mentioned that you love social work. And so I wanted to just kind of, this is a question that I'll hopefully will be asking of the guests that come on this show, because I think it's important for people to um, get an idea of just what brings people to social work. So do you have a, any kind of story or anecdote, or have you ever thought, like, why did you end up choosing this kind of work or social work? Yeah, I feel like I get that question a lot. And <laughs> I know. Again, it's, I think we all do. <laughs> it's like, it's such a big question for me because it's been so much of my life without even the title and me realizing, mm-hmm, oh, mm-hmm. this is social work. Um, but I actually had originally, when I was in high school, I had a guidance counselor help me figure out my path and what I wanted Mm. to do. And um, I originally was going to do teaching and get into um, working with high school students because for some reason I've always loved working with high school students. And and so he kind of helped me figure out that path path and was like, oh, maybe um, getting your teaching credential would be something you can do. And so Mm -hmm. that's what I was originally going to do. And then get more into psychology and counseling Mm -hmm. and all that. So my path was to do, um, be a school counselor. So Mm -hmm. kind of in that journey of figuring out what I wanted to do and taking different classes, I discovered social work and it was Mm -hmm. something that was like a light bulb. It was like, oh my gosh, this, yes. When I read what it was, I was like, this is totally (laughs) my personality. This is exactly what I want to do. Um, so when I, when I found that as a degree, as a major, I was like, yes, this is what I'm going to do. So we, so I switched gears and ended up, um, taking all the classes I could and then getting Mm -hmm. ready to transfer. It took me a really long time. Like I didn't transfer (laughs) out of a community college until like, let's see, I was like, in my late 20s. So you took your time. You took the, 
the easy. But I well, know it was not easy. Not, I, I, it was more so just lifestyle. Like I, uh -huh. I had to work when I went to school. I had to, you know, put myself through school and get loans and all of that. So it was kind mm -hmm. of like this. Just I knew I had a goal. I had a dream. I had a vision, and I was slowly working towards it. And then mm -hmm. it just, you know. Because I kept moving towards that, because it was yeah. just something that was like, yes, I've got to do this. And you finally got there. And so, yeah. um, I wanted to, you've touched on it a little bit, but I know, so it's more, I think, in social work, like, some of us maybe got, like, you got guidance from a, a counselor or something in high school, or at some point, someone kind of, you know, we figured out the, the technical piece of, like, you got to go to school, you need this degree, there's these different areas, some of that stuff, but to me, I think that a lot of us who are in social work or helping professions, it's more than that stuff. It's like about mm -hmm. like really a love for the work or a passion. And I know you, um, you know, we're going to get into this part of your passion in a little bit. But I know even when we were working together, um, you I knew a little bit about I don't think I knew completely the whole story, though, about you did a bike ride. Um, yeah. that was really, I think, driven by your, your passion and desire to, to make a difference. So I don't know if you want to share a little bit about that experience. Yeah, that was a great experience for me. Um, I did this anti-human trafficking campaign because that was also another um, area where I was really passionate about and advocating for um, human trafficking survivors. And so mm -hmm. I teamed up with a group of um People and we did a ride from San Luis or from from San Jose to San Luis, raising funds for different mm -hmm. nonprofits working with um, human trafficking survivors. So that was really cool. It was very challenging personally, physically, um, but also a great. Um, it was a great opportunity for me to just kind of see what was in me and how far mm -hmm. I would go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, I try not to talk about that too much because I feel like that's like <laughs> I don't I don't want to be like oh look at this great yeah. like well I mean I, no like, I know <laughs> I was super impressed not not as I mean as you can see I'm a very um, I have have a lot of emphasis on physical health if you take a look at me and if you're listening to this that may not necessarily be true but. Uh, what I was more impressed with was not so much like the accomplishment of it, but just like the motivation to do something like that. And like thinking yeah. about what, what, what kind of person is it that would do this in, in a good a way, you know, one. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> what kind of crazy I like, person do I, I have I working this? with me? I barely trained and I'm, I don't know. I just, I do have a really big, <laughs> like passionate side for things mm -hmm. that I'm really um, all about and I think I just went full force and was like mm -hmm. you know once you find something that you love you gotta just go it's like almost in. like you don't even have a choice like it's, yeah, it's was, in you and it's coming <laughs> yeah, out I was like I can't give up on this <laughs> I'm crazy for doing this I'm gonna do it <laughs> okay so um you know we're talking so much about like how much you know you really have been driven to do a lot of this work and it just comes naturally have you ever Again, this kind of speaks to what we'll talk about in a bit, but have you ever um, thought about doing just something completely different? You mentioned kind of teaching, which is related. This other stuff we're going to talk about is related. Have you ever thought about, like, we're in Silicon Valley, like an engineer or, like, just something totally... A different totally, career? Yeah. Um, yes. I think I... So this kind of falls in line with how I started my my journey to social work. Um I've always loved doing hair. <laughs> when I was younger, I've always inherited my friend's hair. It was another thing that was in me. And I always thought, I'm going to go to school and and be one of the top like hairstylists and go out there and teach and do trade shows. And mm -hmm. so I actually started in cosmetology school right after high school. Um, I went to community college and thought, I need a break. I'm going to get my cosmetology license. So I did that. And that was one of my, um, one of my plans. I always have backup plans mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. one of them was do psychology <laughs> social work and hair <laughs> so um i went to cosmetology school i did that i completed it um uh, but then as i got into the field i realized that um and i discovered that i was really allergic to a lot of the products and the mm -hmm. chemicals and just being in that environment is there's there's just a lot of different things that add stress and so mm -hmm. that was when i was like okay i'm gonna go back to college and get my degree in social work because mm -hmm. I can't I can't survive off of yeah. being a hairstylist because mm -hmm. I'm allergic to everything. 
So, well, that decision was kind of made for you then was, in some way. It was, sadly, because it's definitely another area where I'm passionate about. And <laughs> it, it is something that I do now. So uh -huh. I do hair on the side. I have a clientele base um, mm -hmm. in the Bay Area. And it's mainly just, it's kind of a fun thing for me now. It's, but again, it's, you know, it's it's who you are and it's yeah, your passion. And yeah, so. I'm able to now modify and I know what products work for mm -hmm. me and what don't. So okay. um, that was kind of another career that I was going to do, but. <laughs> so if you just noticed a little difference in the in the video um, we made a little change we're having some technical difficulties here but we changed up the microphones because I think it's important to hear Mariah more than me <clears throat> so um, so we we're gonna keep going on and, and now you'll hear Mariah I think a lot better so back to the um, the questions that we had um, here is you mentioned, you know, your stuff in that doing your stuff with hair on the side and you have this other thing that we see here. You brought some of your your materials here. Do you want to give us a quick, first of all, just explanation of what it is and, and what it's what are you doing? Why are you doing it? All yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah, I love talking about my business. OK, that's why I created it. Um, so I launched a business that is Coffee for a Cause. It's a social enterprise business that works to help nonprofits continue to do what they're doing, um, specifically working with foster youth and at-risk youth, refugees, um, or trafficking survivors. And um, it's kind of a combination of everything I love. It's coffee, which I'm obsessed with. You can see me drinking <laughs> my second cup of coffee, and it's not even noon. Um, <laughs> or it's afternoon. I don't know what time it is. But... Um, yeah, so coffee, it involves a lot of um, community-based stuff, connecting with people. So that's more of the social work aspect for me and a lot of advocacy and spotlighting different nonprofits that are doing really great things out in the world. So um, coffee people causes, that's what this business is about. And um, I sell ethically sourced coffee, so it's all kind of sustainable-minded. It goes back to not just our community, but um, it's also kind of fueling that sustainable um, practices in the farming countries mm -hmm. where the beans are being roasted, um, or not roasted, being cultivated and then, you know, brought over here. So, so it's still some of those um, social work, you know, philosophies and social justice and advocacy. Yes. It's, it's, it's all intertwined into, yes. into this work that you're doing. Yes, I As work with foster youth and... Um, sponsoring them so we also take different youth and sponsor them and help them with um, educational expenses things that they might need support in and just kind of getting through and accomplishing their goals in life mm -hmm. cool awesome so um, you know one of the things that I I like to talk about because it's something that you know always like you said having a backup plan or just other <laughs> interests that are not only like our nine to five jobs or whatever, always, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I enjoy that. And I feel like there's a lot of people out there that, that also have these other talents and skills, but it's, it's when you're working nine to five and sometimes overwhelmed in a, in a more traditional social work job, mm -hmm. it's hard to take that leap. So yeah. was there any, like, how did you get motivated to just, cause I, I'm, I don't think you grew up like running a coffee business or, or I don't think you had that background. So how did you just decide to take the leap and just do it? Um, well, I guess I did have a little bit of the background because I worked in a coffee shop for oh, right. like over five years when I was in high school. It's really what put me through college and a lot of things. So I experienced mm -hmm. my love of coffee when I was very young um, and always thought to myself, I'm going to have a coffee shop someday just like this. Mm -hmm. Um and so that was something that was also in me and kind of brewing a little bit. Oh. But I'm, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I forgot your question. <laughs> I think that's a, a good way to answer that right there. You always you did actually have a little background, so it was yes. easier for you to to take that um, a less of a leap, but still a leap. It to, was to definitely start a leap new. because I I. I did quit my nine to five social work job. Um, and it, it wasn't, it was difficult, but it was also easy because I had a goal. I had a vision and a mission that I had been creating for mm. about six months. And it just, I had an opportunity to work 
elsewhere and it fit with the kind of the schedule that I had in my mind that I was thinking would help me boost this business. So when I was approached to work for this other family, I kind of took the risk and I was like, okay, I feel like this is kind of a sign. Like, Mm -hmm. go ahead. You have to just do it and see what happens. Um, I was really burnt out from social work. So Mm -hmm. I kind of, um, I needed that opportunity and it was the universe was yeah. great and things, offered it things to me, so it was amazing. And I, <laughs> and I actually think that you said something um, really, really key, really important, um, that if you have a mission or a, a vision, you know, a, a lot of times I think, and it sounds like you had the same experience, that that will kind of guide you, it'll get you through the tough times, like when you mm-hmm. doubt yourself, like if the vision is there, that will that will carry you when you're doing something Something scary that's kind of out of the, a little bit out of the box of what we normally do. Oh, totally. Um, Entrepreneurial life is really different than (laughs) most people think. And it's very challenging and hard. But I think if you have that vision and those goals, so just keep working towards them always. And and so along those lines of continuing to work because there's it's not all you know glitz and glamour with your business it's <laughs> there's there's work that you have to do and so um are there any kind of skills social work skills that that kind of transfer or or help you do your entrepreneurial stuff i think we kind of touched on some a little bit but anything specifically that that you that transfers across from social work to to your business um, I would say being familiar with your community and the needs that they have mm. and the resources, because I've had people reach out to me that want to find out more about, um, helping refugees. And so part of that is also my background in working with refugees and because of my social work career and that I was able to connect them to kind of a source and, um, being familiar and then just being that connector piece, I think, is important. And, and I, I kind of knew where to go. I think knowing your resources is really important as a social worker because yeah, there's sure. so many times when I'm approached <laughs> where I'm like, oh, I got it. I want to, you know, there's this homeless shelter or there's uh-huh. this um, program that will help you get a job or whatever. So I think those skills that I learned in my full time career as a social worker, I really have. Um, been able to transfer over to working in the coffee Cause you're Because you're still working with people, right? Like you're, Yes. The work that you're doing, although from the outside to some people might seem like very different, like social work, coffee sh- business. Yeah, nobody's doing what I'm doing right now. So <laughs> it's a whole new thing. I've never and... heard of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So, and then, so speaking a little bit to that, that no one else is doing it, how do you, and talking about vision, what is your vision, let's say for the next three, five, ten years, like how... What do you want to do with this business? How, how do you want oh, to grow man. it? Um, so every year I have a word that I choose that I try to envelop. And this year it's growth. Um, and so I think that is going to always be a word that I have for this business is to grow. Um, I hope to one day pass it off and mm. not be the main person doing everything. <laughs> I hope to hire a small team and have a group of people helping me run this business. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would say that in the next kind of my ultimate goal and dream is to have my own actual physical coffee shop location where it's like a hub and a resource center for foster youth, for people in need who need to come and um, just feel a sense of belonging, a sense of home, mm-hmm. a safe place, but also a place where they can get really amazing ethically sourced coffee <laughs> yeah i mean when you were saying that i i think and i think a lot of our colleagues like what better product or thing to mm-hmm. just give you that feeling of like comfort and mm-hmm. and home and and you know it's almost like you're getting a hug when i drink my coffee in the morning i feel like i'm getting me a nice little warm hug to start my day for oh my totally coffee. i so. coffee is like <laughs> my happy place yeah, anytime I have yeah. it it just makes you feel warm and good so I want to transfer that into an actual location where I could have people come and just have a great coffee but also community and a platform to um to just be safe mm-hmm. and feel good and 
be around good and things. And create community. Like yeah. you create a community around around coffee mm-hmm. and, and all the other passions all come together. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so um we'll give I'll give Mariah a chance to take a drink and we'll take a, a quick break so she can hit her coffee or her water or whatever. And I just, speaking of, my, you know, interest and entrepreneurial stuff, and I mentioned how I have my interest, um, I'll, most of you are watching this somehow because you got information or are listening to this. You learned about the social work mentor. And that's kind of something that I've been working on for my nine to five job. It's a little side hustle. But um, the social work mentor that I've been developing is a resource for future and current social workers and other helping professionals. The social work mentor consists of a web app and an Android app and um, that I think you should definitely check out because it w- it can be of assistance in your practice. Um, and then we also offer courses. We have a little social work store that has kind of like social work shirts and hoodies and mugs. Um, we're working on, yeah, swag. <laughs> That's the word I was looking for. I'm not cool enough to think of that. But um, also we're working on, um, I think I mentioned courses and and we also, uh, the newest thing that I've added to our store is um, some kind of, if you have a private practice or something and you're working with kids um, with ADHD or ADD and they need help with self-regulation and stuff, there's products that you can, you know, use to assist with that. And um, so those are on our website too. So I won't say much more. You can go to um, socialworkmentor.com slash links and you can find out all about the social work mentor stuff. So it looks like um, Mariah has hydrated. She had a little more uh, drink, and we can stop talking about social work mentor and back to Mariah's efforts here. Um, So I I wanted to ask you, um, you kind of have spoken to the passion that you've had for um, human trafficking and, and a lot of stuff. Is there anything that has really stood out as being like one of the most impactful experiences um, that you've had as a social worker or in the field of social work? Like a real one of those things that just jumps out that. Um, oh, man. And I know sometimes um, it's it's hard because we do so much stuff and they all I think sometimes when you've been doing it for a while, like, you know, sometimes people have stories that jump out, but some is just all like every single time is that mm-hmm. story. And so it's hard to mm-hmm. pick one out. Um, or even if I was also thinking about on the flip side of that, there's mm-hmm. like, I could probably name a few of the most frustrating things that I've run <laughs> up against. So is there a, um, a, a particular experience that you've had in this field that was just so frustrating to you? Um, oh man, that, again, that's a loaded question, <laughs> <laughs> but great. I love to answer all these. Um, so either something really awesome that stands out or really frustrating, or if not, we can, um, I got a lot of mo, so I can ask <laughs> <the> question. <laughs> no, these are great. I'm just trying to think of, of, I have in each kind of job I've worked in, I have different things that stand out to me in the social work practice. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think one, one that has the most, that has had the most impact on me was working for, um, refugee foster care and working with all those kids and hearing the stories and the journey that they had to take to get here. And Mm -hmm. it really changed my mind frame of working with, with various people of different backgrounds and different cultures and coming from different places. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think that has impacted me the most because I came from working with the County foster care to working with, uh, refugee foster care program that's totally different it's mm-hmm. federally funded it's not mm-hmm. it's not at yeah. all like county foster care so i think that ha- that transition and learning mm-hmm. about um different type of foster care services was really different and impactful um mm-hmm. but then also just the youth um they were so amazing and it was that's just so the good. most i think powerful time that I had when I worked. That's that's them. an interesting, I hadn't really thought about just how different county, you know, foster care is from, you know, all the other things that are out there. And, and mm-hmm. to be able to have that perspective is, is a pretty unique thing. Yeah, I feel very privileged mm-hmm. and honored that I had that experience because mm-hmm. now it, I feel like it's really helped me to be a bit more balanced in my mm-hmm. social work practice and understanding of um, people of different 
ethnicities and yeah. cultures yeah. and history. You see that for sure. <laughs> so okay, so um, so other other than education, for for some people out there that maybe are um, you know, in high school or or still trying to figure out what their career paths are going to be, and they're working on their education. But other than education, how do you think that um, people can prepare themselves for this kind of work? What other things could they do besides, you know, BSW, MSW? Volunteer. I think that yes. volunteering is really important for the community, for um, building a resume, building experience, work experience. Um, I would recommend to high school students, and I always recommend it to, like, all the kids I work with, is volunteer somewhere if you're not sure, because you have not as much responsibility, but you'll get some, mm -hmm. and you'll get a lot of experience and exposure to what path or what what type of um, environment you want to work in, whether it's a hospital setting, a school setting, mm -hmm. or, you know... Because you don't know, like, you have an, a... a, a kind of high level idea I think sometimes mm -hmm. but you don't know until you really roll up your sleeves and get in there and start doing it right that you figure out eh, maybe this isn't what I thought right and that's okay this. it's totally okay yeah. to take different routes and do different that's things. like the purpose right to yeah I've done so much in my life where I've <laughs> transitioned and changed from this to that and it's it kind of feels overwhelming but at the same time it's really helped me to narrow down mm -hmm. what's important to me what i like who i am as a person mm -hmm. um but i think also in kind of conjunction with volunteering is just really get to know yourself i think that's super important to figure out what your strengths and your weaknesses are and um go based on that don't go based on what your best friend is doing because mm -hmm. you're both two different people so Remember your strengths and weaknesses and emphasize jobs that are kind of catering to your strengths. Mm -hmm. And kind of speaking to that a little bit, the question that, that transitions me to is how, how do you take care of yourself with, you know, the work that you do, the experiences that you've had? What do you do just like on Mariah time? Oh, gosh. What, is, what does that look like? <laughs> Other than coffee. Um, yeah, I'm always drinking <laughs> coffee. So... Lately, I've been really trying to incorporate, um, I mean, Instagram has really great uh, bucket list people that will literally create a bucket list for you. Um, so I've been trying to be more mindful of... Can, can you explain that a little more? Because I'm kind of a new to list? Instagram. No, I know a bucket oh, okay. list, but like on Instagram, I'm new-ish to Instagram, and so I don't... What, what is that about, like the Instagram bucket list? Thing? So I say Instagram bucket list, but it's really San Francisco bucket list. I'm totally putting like a shout out to them because they're <laughs> it's been awesome. I follow them and they make these different lists that um, people can go and explore and try out new things in San Francisco uh -huh. or all over the Bay Area. Um, and since and I'm kind not, of documented on Instagram. They just will literally have like pictures of places that you can go and check out. They'll say like top, you know, cafes to check out in san francisco mm. and so there you go you have seven cafes that you can go and check out oh, if you okay. love coffee shops or whatever um so in my free time i've been trying to do a lot of those things because that does sound cool i, I love being adventurous <laughs> and trying new things and um it's been everything i've tried whether it's you know a food place or an actual place it's been really amazing and mm -hmm. added so much fulfillment to my life so that's kind of how i've been taking care of myself lately okay so i'm glad you're doing that because number one it's something that you enjoy but number two i just found out something that i might start doing so yes. <laughs> that's a benefit to me so um i think for the you kind of talked a little bit about this but my last question that i have before we get to the lightning round that i forgot to tell you what we're gonna do, <laughs> oh, no. but um is just what's next like the next you know whether it's with the advocate or with your bucket list or family <laughs> or anything like what what's next for you on um, your horizon for me it's i mean i feel like my life the last couple of years has really been about my coffee business and building that so it's still going to be that and I'm starting to blog, which is really nerve wracking because I don't like <laughs> to be so exposed like these type of things. So I'm trying uh -huh. to be more open to putting myself out there and letting people know my mission and 
doing it in a way that's staying up to times with um, the trends. And lately mm. it's been videos and TikTok and yeah. all these things. And people are telling me, you got to do this, post videos and do TikTok. And I'm like, oh, my God, I don't know. Yeah. So I am I think that's on the horizon for me is to be um, more of like a blog style um, coffee business, selling my coffee um, and just getting out there more. And I'm, I'm glad you say that because I think for many of us that just come from social work and we're not like the business background or whatever, it's kind of, you know, we're very community oriented. We're very, mm-hmm. we did this. This is a team. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, as someone who, who ventured into that in a, in the political realm recently and with my little business stuff, like it's hard to, to talk about yourself and promote yourself and, and be, out there so you know i commend you for that just because i know how you got to come out of your comfort zone for many of us it's not natural this is not it's not what we kind of got into but the passion (laughs) drives us still it is and i'm definitely more of an introvert so it's something that is really foreign to me like when people ask me to do (laughs) podcasts and they want to post a video i'm like okay let's do it but it's all right, cut. We gotta do. <laughs> if it's for something good and something that I align with, I'm all for it. And I just have to get past that, like, yeah. introvert side. Well, so speaking of that, um, since you did get, you know, out of your comfort zone and you did this, and I appreciate it and thank you for being my Thanks, first sir. ever guest here. Yeah. I think we did an okay job. I, I learned some new stuff about you. Um, and if I need my hair did ever pretty soon, I know where to go. Thank but you. Um, you want to give a little more. So you have here some of your coffee. We have a candle mug, a little dual purpose thing here. Mm-hmm. And you have uh, a tote, it looks like. Do you want to, is there a particular website ad- or web address they should go to or any information you want to give people? And I'll put all the links too, but awesome. anything. Yeah. Um, everything that I do is is really online right now. And my website is um, just the advocatecoffee.com and you can find all of the different types of roasts that I have, my blog, um, and anything really, any, any way to get in touch with me, you can go to my website. Right. I'm on Instagram and, um, eventually I'll try YouTube and TikTok. All right. And so I'll see. connect all that stuff here. <laughs> cool. So the final thing as we wrap it up here is our, our lightning round, Ooh. no pressure, but we'll see <laughs> how you do. So these are just quick, you know, first thing that comes to your mind answers. Oh, no, don't do that because I have a really weird <laughs> mind. <laughs> well, we're all going to see I'm that. Nervous now. <laughs> okay, they're not that hard, though. <laughs> What's the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning? Make coffee. That was easy. Dogs or cats? A little bit of both. <sighs> you had to choose? Oh, my gosh. I just want to see you squirm. That's fine. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Wine, beer, or non alcoholic? Wine. Okay. Mountains or beach? Both. Again, another both. Okay. I'm sorry. They're so <laughs> majestic in different ways. Favorite cereal? I don't eat cereal. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'll replace that with uh, pizza or hamburger. Pizza. Okay. Last amusement park ride you got on? Oh, I was just at Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk and it was... The, I forget the name of it. But um, was it like a roller coaster? It was or the one where ride? you're in the cage and you can like go around. Like Tilt a whirl or something? I don't know. So we get it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, do you sit in front or the back of the classroom? Usually back, but I, I know in my, in like my heart, I need to sit in the front because <laughs> I'll pay attention more and I won't be like observing everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite social media platform? Instagram. Okay. Uh, do you check email first thing or wait a while? What do you mean? First like, thing. Like first thing, first start of your day. Is, is Oh, yeah. I usually try to always check my email. if I'm, When I'm making coffee, I'll look and see if there's anything super important. All right. Work with groups or individuals? Individuals. Okay. And the last one, we'll see if it applies. Case notes immediately, or I'll get to it later. Oh, gosh. The dreaded case notes in the social work world. <laughs> well, I think the but we right... we do have those people, like those people that are on it, and we have people like me that are like, it'll happen at some point. What about you? 
I try to get to it right away because I am kind of type A and I like things to be organized and I hate being behind, but in casework, social work world, you're always behind on case notes. So yeah, it's hard to stay <laughs> it's on really top hard to stay things. on top of it. All right. Well, that is it for our episode one. First episode, we had some technical difficulties, but we've come out on the other side alive. So we, we did it. Thank you again to Mariah for being our first guest here on, on our podcast. Um, Check out her website that I'll put the links to and also Social Work Mentor that I'll also put links to. And also subscribe to this podcast because you see how awesome it is. We won't always have a a guest like this, but we're going to try our best. So make sure you subscribe or follow or whatever it is so that you get notified um, when the next one comes out. So thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Mariah. And we'll talk to everybody soon. (laughs) Bye-bye.